Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be showing you the best and most optimal way to combine multiple tables using Power Query. Now this table can come from any any source. Uh, that can be a SQL database uh, that you might want to combine uh, with Excel files or even with Oracle data or even with any type of uh, data source that you want. The idea is that you can combine, consolidate or append any table from any source. Now this content that we're going to be seeing here uh, is something that we cover in depth in the second day of the Power Query workshop. You can find more information about the workshop in the link in the description below. Uh, also, uh, be sure to check out at the end of this video for a promotional code, a coupon code uh, for the next upcoming workshop. So here, uh, the idea that I have or, or the example that I have here is that I have data from Excel. As you can see here, I have data from July, August, September. Uh, for basically sales. This is sales data on a daily day basis and we have some information about those sales like the product that was sold and uh, in what territory uh, the category of that product, the sales order and more information about this. So we have the Q3 of 2014 and we want to append or combine that data with the one that we also have for uh, Q4 which is October, November, and December, which is in another file. Now, we've been uh, good about this, and we have actually stored both of these files in a single folder, and we would like to combine these two so we can have basically half of the data of the year, which is just going to be from June all the way uh, down to December. Now the rest of the data for the whole for the rest of the year actually comes from a SQL database. So we will need to co to actually connect to this database, extract the data from this SQL database, and then append it to the data that we have in uh, Excel. So that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm going to close this. As you can see, the data is actually stored as spreadsheets, nothing fancy, no tables, no defined names, just spreadsheets. And before we combine those spreadsheets, I'm going to get the data from my SQL Server. So I'm going to go with Power Query from database from SQL Server. Here I'm going to input the name of my server, the name of the database, and if, for example, I had someone who could actually help me out and create that SQL statement I could have actually used that the SQL statement here and it will actually bring the data that I need for those dates uh, I will have to actually filter this out so I can actually get the data for uh, the, uh, the year 2014 or what I could have actually used here is simply connect to the database and I can actually interact with the objects within that database here, the tables, the functions, the views, and create that specific query. And that's what I actually did. I created my own Power Query query so I can actually have all of the data that I need from 2014. I'm going to copy and paste it here and as you can see here this one has uh, from the 1st of January of 2014 all the way down to the 30th of June of that year I can put this and I'm gonna name it as SQL SQL DB let's put it here and I'm gonna close and load it as a connection only now you have the data for half of the actual year. Now what I'm going to do is get the data for the rest of the year. And that is stored in an Excel workbook or in multiple Excel workbooks. Those are actually stored in the same folder. So let's go ahead and search for that specific folder. It's right here. Quarterly sales. 
I'm going to connect to that specific folder and you're going to see both of those uh, files in here Q3 and Q4. Now I don't really need any of this data all I care is the data that is stored in the content column that actually holds the binary and what I need is I need to read this information from this binary so it can be translated into uh, data that I can actually use in Power Query. So the function that can read that binary as an Excel file is excel.workbook. The parameter that we're going to be using here is content, which is the binary. And as an optional, uh, we can actually use true here. And what that does is that it promotes the actual first row to be considered as header in all of the uh, actual uh, spreadsheets. So we have it here. As you can see, all of the tables have the actual headers that we need. And you might be thinking that, hey, um, we might be able to expand this and get away with it. And that might actually work. But as you can see here in the code, here in the formula bar, uh, when you actually do that operation, it hard codes the name of the fields that it's going to be uh, expanding. And it also hard codes the name of those uh, fields for the new columns. That might be a good scenario if you actually set the data correctly, so it's always the same. But if you need something that is completely dynamic and it it doesn't really need uh, this to be hard coded, which is not one of the best practices. Uh, what you can do is the most optimized way to actually combine table data. So I'm going to close this one. And as you can see here, the data is actually stored in a column. All of the tables are in one column called custom.data. So I'm going to right click on that one, I'm going to click where it says drill down and then drill down is going to create a new step with the same name of the column and what this does is that transform that specific column into a list and the values from that list are actually tables so this is a list of tables. What I can do now is that I can wrap that code inside table combine or table.combine and what table combine does is that combines all of the tables from a list. So it needs a list of tables and it gonna, it's going to combine all of the tables within that list. And that is exactly what it does, as you can see here. Now that's combining all of the data from the Excel files. But is there any way that I can actually combine that data plus the one that we actually have in the SQL DB? Well, there is. I'm going to go back. I'm going to click where it says table combine. Simply erase that. And I'm going to have this list. Now remember that we're actually using a list for table combine. So what we need is somehow to create a seventh element, which is just going to be the table for the SQL DB. Now, what we would need here is to use the sister or the brother of table combine, which is list combine, which is just going to combine lists. So here, this is a list. And I'm going to combine a list of lists. So I'm going to create this list, which is pretty much creating a list by using the curly brackets here SQLDB it's going to be another list and in that list we're going to have just one table which is this one and then close both of this list and as you can see here we just added that new table what we can do is that we can actually add more and more tables that we need to combine simply by uh, using commas. 
as you can see here now I actually have eight elements which is just the seventh one duplicated again now I'm gonna wrap this up the list combine inside table combine and that's gonna combine or append all of these tables together and that is exactly what I get I'm gonna sort this and then I'm gonna close and load it and I'm gonna create a table from this and this is the most optimal way uh, the most uh, beneficial way for you to actually create uh, a combined scenario or a table combination or a pendant when you're actually using Power Query and that is it guys uh, thank you for watching uh, don't forget to actually visit the Power Query Workshop site uh, in the actual screen you should be able to see the coupon code by now it's gonna give you a 10% discount and don't forget to actually do it pretty soon as that coupon code might expire so thanks again and see you around